I did it. Welcome everybody to my first Instagram live. It's making a lot of noise this thing. Hang on, hang on. There you go. Lovely. Now, obviously, we are loving the Star Wars at the moment, which is where I'm going to start. We're going to use this uh, this little Insta live as a uh, as a way to sort of sum up um, the past, well, the last year or so, and to also look to next year. Now, everybody, yes, I am in the film. Princes may have been cut out, but I am in it. Oh, yes, I am. However, I'm quite hard to spot. Okay, it's literally like a millisecond, right? I don't know, I don't know, I don't and I'm gone. Okay, so you gotta be, you gotta really, when the DVD comes out or it goes online, you're gonna be able to see me a lot easier. But I had a fabulous day down shooting um, at Star Wars. I was only an extra. I was an ex, ex, hello, this guy here, I got him because uh, I wanted just to celebrate the moment that I played him. Um, so I put the uh, I put the uniform on and um, a guy come over called Chewbacca and um, he said, you know, if you go back to your trailer, the, there's a guy called Luke Skywalker who'll be FaceTiming you. So I said, surely, anyway, he said, apparently he was. So I went back to my trailer and I had about 10 minutes on FaceTime with Mark Hamill, who was absolutely gorgeous. I mean, he really didn't want to be FaceTiming with me, I'm sure of it, but he, he he's such a good actor, he made it seem like he wanted to be FaceTiming with me. He was so lovely. And I was seven when I first saw that and always loved him. And then a few weeks later, now I don't know if you can see this, but he sent me this. And it says on it, um, from one X-Wing pilot to another, I hope it's your greatest day of your life. Mark Hamill, amazing. And he was, he was just fab fabulous. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, big moment. I've really, really enjoyed that day. Um, so, when it comes out and you can have a proper look where they let you film it, you'll spot us. We're in the trenches um, on like a fight scene. I, I'll put it more online. I'll, I'll put the clip and stuff online when we know about it. So anyway, let's review, um, let's review this year. It's been, uh, it's been a really busy year, as you all know, because you're all part of everything I do. Um, we kicked off the year with, with Let It Shine TV. TV's really difficult. Um, I found of all the things I've been involved with, um, TV's the hardest. And the reason it's the hardest is because I think as soon as you say Saturday night, all the knives are out. Everybody wants to just kill you for anything you do or say or any action. It's a really, really tough thing to do beyond telly. The people who've done it for you know, 12 years or whatever it is, respect them because it's it's really hard. It's, it's almost a thankless task in a way. Um, but, you know, I, I have to say that the goal of being on TV was not just for the sake of being on TV. It was, we were there doing a job. You know, we wanted to find, we hoped to find um, a band for our, for our musical, which at that point was still being written. So I, I know that everyone who watched the show I have to thank you for your patience and and the fact that you you led us I mean it was you know out of all these sort of shows that are on TV it was such an ambitious thing to do we were still writing the script um the idea of of you know putting a group together and and letting an audience pick who didn't even know what the show was about at that but it was it just felt like an impossible task um and I think that all the stars aligned for us. Somebody very kind was looking down on us because he they gave us five to five who who were absolutely not only a fabulous group, 
but um, we could tell from the makeup and being around them that they were absolutely a joy to be to be with and and actually actually now it's on the road and it's touring um they they kind of lead the company they're they're so professional and responsible and they take their jobs so seriously and we're just tremendously proud of them uh, and I'll come back to the show a bit later on because if I if I do this year chronologically we'll get to the show um so yeah we left BBC One in a good place and um and I really I did enjoy the series um and I, I was also glad to come off TV and get straight um, back to to take that business really and we we'd been making this album um I don't know if we ever said this but the album was meant to be before Christmas and we we were just struggling over the last couple of songs just deciding things and we just thought oh let's put it back it's too much of a headache uh, we wanted to get it right um for ourselves and for you and um and anyway, we that that followed in, in I think the March. Uh, we had Giants out. We had the album out. We were really thrilled with how people responded to it. And of course, not so long after the record coming out, we went on tour. And the tour was for anyone who was there. I think you'll agree it was a magical um, time. Um, I think for us as a as a three piece, we've we we only became comfortable with being a three piece when we toured the three tour. I think for for the first time being a three, we actually believed in ourselves on the three tour. Um, so being back out again as a three, almost cementing what we wanted to, you know, the message and the fact that we're here now as a, as a three, that um, it felt really good. Um, and the, the tour was such a joy. I'm, uh, I mean, actually, the, this year for touring has been, I think, my favourite ever. Um, get, I'm getting more out of live shows than I that, than I ever got out of them in the past for some reason. Um, but yeah, we loved that tour. Absolutely loved it. Um, and then at the same time, that all this going on, we we launched Calendar Girls the West End and um, I know a lot of you know that story but basically Tim and I and Tim's an old old school friend of mine I met him when I was 15 um, we started that about the end of 2012 so we that's that was five years sort of in the in the workings um, and so to finally see it come to the West End was a was a treat, a real treat. We had two big nights. We had a, an opening night, and uh, we had like a gala night, and it was just a, a fabulous few days. Um, and you know, we went to see that show many, many times while it was on in the West End, and the audiences were just amazing. They responded to it. They were touched and moved by it. Um, as I always was, every time I saw it, it always got me. A different line would get me each time. Um, and I think for, for, for Tim and me, that was that was not only exciting, because it, it was exciting because it was the kind of start of our partnership. And, uh, you know, we already knew we, that Tim was going to write the band for us. Uh, he was in full flow, even while we were launching Calendar Girls. Um, but he has obviously done an incredible job on that for us as well and he's he's a real member of the family uh for us he's he's a fabulous man um and so summer came and uh we we had a little break and then we come straight back after the summer's launched the band in manchester absolutely incredible we we thought we knew how audiences were going to respond to this storyline because it's a brand new story for anyone who's seen it and the audiences have been absolutely unbelievable um i can't tell you how happy our our cast and our our touring crew are because it's it's a really difficult you know the night you see them in wherever you go to bradford or or landudna or wherever you see them for one night and they they're doing that show sometimes nine times a week um sometimes eight times a week but never less than eight times a week and they're doing it till i believe march of 2019 
Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing job they do and the art form of going out there every night and making it feel brand new and like the first time they've ever done it is absolutely tremendous and, and we, we can't, whenever we, we turn up to the shows, we can't thank everybody enough. They, they do a sterling, tremendous job of representing all our past, really. You know, th that story is so intertwined with all our, our pasts. And um, and they do a brilliant job of it, and so do, does our crew on the road. And, and so long may that continue. We have got a little surprise early in the new year for that project. Um, so I'm not I'm not going to re reveal that tonight, but that's just something to look out for very early. Um, and then of course we went off and we went to uh, Australia. We hadn't toured there for for 22 years, which I'm embarrassed to say because. It was so wonderful being back there. Um, and the audiences were just, it was like we'd, we'd been there two years ago. Um, they knew all the songs and it was, you know, we were worried we were going to be playing to empty rooms. It was the absolute opposite. The audiences were phenomenal. Um, and so we, we left a place that we hadn't toured from 22 years to a place we'd never, ever toured before. And I'd only been there once as a solo artist, I think in 98. Um, New Zealand um, and I think it took everyone by surprise really I think I think everyone sort of thought it was going to be like a, just as a smaller Australia and it was it was mind-blowing what we saw in the few days we were there was absolutely in fact I have already informed everyone here we're going to go back on holiday I just found it incredible a really incredible part of the world um, and and the reason it's so far away is why it's so special, I think. Um, but we felt very lucky to go and tour there. It was it was absolutely brilliant. And then from there, we did our big flight and we played for the very first time in uh, in Tel Aviv, which was absolutely sensational. Um, I, funny, we had a day off before the show and um, I never do the tourist thing. Um, and I went off and floated in the Dead Sea and went to Jerusalem and went into Bethlehem and it was just, I'm still telling people about it, it was incredible. For anyone looking for a fascinating and interesting break, I mean, you get so close to the UK, you could do it in a long weekend, it is a wonderful, wonderful place. Um, you feel like you're walking, you know, millions of years ago. It's 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 truly... It's touching, and I'm 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 not really a religious person, but it was it brought up lots of emotions. Wailing war was incredible. I did did my little prayer and put it in the wall. It was absolutely gorgeous, and I I guess it means a, a different things to to everyone, um, but it touched me, and I I loved it. I really loved it. Um, and so uh, that took us then to Dubai, which is our last show of the um, the, the last show of the year. Um, and uh, and that was it. That was that was TT signing off, uh, twenty seventeen. Uh, we did have, and I will tease this. We did have a very big uh, sort of band meeting last week, um, because we're taking quite a big break now. I'm obviously uh, we'll talk about this, but I'm obviously going to hit the road a bit until next summer. So there's lots of other sort of solo project going on early in next year. Um, but we sat and sort of planned as a band the following year, the tour for the following year, and just just be ready, everybody, because I see, I do I do read social media a lot. I try and keep in tune with what everybody's wanting and what everybody's saying. And internationally, I'm pleased to say there's not many places we're going to be leaving out in 2019. So I'll be surprised. If you're on tweeting or on Instagram, that if if you're on here, I'm I'm pretty certain we're going to be coming to see you, um, and that includes USA. Um, I'm not going to give too much away on this because there's there's going to be a big announcement after next summer, um, but we will basically be doing a very big world tour in 2019, and we're very excited. I mean, like. I think, you know, that we all sort of looked at each other at the end of the meeting and we were like, yeah, we're ready for this. We're ready to take this challenge on. So we're, we're really, really excited for that. Um, so let's launch into next year. 
Um, I've already started putting a set list together. Um, the next big thing for me, obviously, is the tour. Um, I'm so thrilled and I feel, let me just have a little sip of my kombucha. Does anybody like this? I'm actually getting a real taste for it. But I've also got a cup of tea here. So let's go into next year. Um, thank you all for, um, for coming to see me. Um, it was a bit of a situation where we couldn't put enough dates on. Every time we put another date on, you guys bought all the tickets. Thank you so much. Um, it's still a, it's still a, it's still frightening. That is, um, because you know when when you announce those tours, um, it's not about streams or getting audience figures from TV shows or you clearly see where your audience is, if they're there or if they're not there as much as last time or there's slightly less and it's it's hard fact. And I know, um, I know how to read those figures and, and I've just been blown away. I'm so, so happy. I can't believe um, that you're all still there. I am, however, gonna put on a, a really, I've got some great bits and pieces because we're, we're in theatres. And, and this was part of the my thinking really is that you know we we um we give you a hard time uh, our audience you know we either make you stand in fields or um or get rained on in stadiums or you know we stick you in those dusty arenas that you know they're they're a spectacle but they're not really that nice to be in um and so we strategically pick really really beautiful theaters um, that are going to be a pleasure to play. You know, you're going to have a nice seat to sit in and we're all going to be close. Um, and so I've designed a really lovely set list. Um, we've got a big band. We've got a 10 stroke 11, I think a 10 piece band. So uh, uh, quite a big brass section. Uh, we've got a couple of singers with us. We've got a really funky band um, as well as the old favorites who you know. Less of the old, I can hear them saying. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be a really nice different sort of show um, for anyone who knows when when I do theatres you know it's we don't really have much production we have really really nice lights um, it's just the show it's the piano it's the band and it's and it's me and you and that's it and that's what's kind of the thrill really um, so I'm I'm really looking forward to that and and getting to places again and this is kind of the remit the way we're thinking moving forward is to get to places I've, I've never played to before. So I'm really, really excited um, to be coming to all the different towns and um, and enjoying that. So that's going to be really, really good. Um, I've also got, um, this is this is an announcement, a little announcement for you all. Um, but I've also, oh, hello. Oh, hello. Do we want to see dogs on here? Is dogs a good idea? Come on. Who's this? Who's this? Coxie, come here. Come here. Can we do dogs on Instagram Live? Oh, here we go. So this is Cookie, everyone. And this is Hugo. She probably can't see with my black T-shirt. Now, Cookie is honestly the cleverest, smartest, most beautiful dog ever. And Hugo, bless him, he's the comedy dog. In fact, only the other day we were walking through the park and some little kid said to his mum, Mum, look at that cat. <coughs> exactly. I mean, he can hear the poor devil, can't you, mate? And he is so placid, he really is. We never really liked small dogs, but Sharon Osborne's the, uh, the reason we got this fella, because she just used to pass her dog um, round the restaurants we used to sit in, and they were so, they were like little teddy bears. And so on our wedding anniversary about three years ago, Dawn just went off and she found him and brought him home. And um, he is gorgeous, but he's a bloody pain, I'm telling you. Right, you've been on TV now. Trying to have a closer look, everyone. Here he is. Here he is. Mr. Hugo. Right, I'm kicking you out now, because otherwise you're going to be moaning. Right, go on, clear off. 
There you go. Anything could happen, by the way. The house is full of kids tonight because they've all broke up today. Um, so, what else were we talking about? So, we have, um, yeah, a little announcement. Um, next, I think April, um, I've done, or I'm doing at the moment, uh, a series of 10 one hour shows for BBC Radio 2. It's a new series called We Write the Songs. It's presented by me. And every week I interview a fabulous, legendary, brilliant songwriter. Uh, we cover different topics each week. Some weeks it's about melody, some weeks it's about working as a team, working as a band, working as a duo, working as a solo artist, just doing lyrics, writing musicals. We have some amazing guests, which I'm not going to tease, but I'm talking like, if that's the bar, that's where they are. They, they are all the best people uh, in, in this field. Uh, and, and of course, for me, um, you know, I don't, I don't really have to try too hard to, to interview them well because I'm fascinated by them. And the times I've been with them in the past, I've been desperate to ask them these questions. Um, but of course, I, I wasn't able to. But, but this show has given me um, a good reason to be able to do that. So we're going to run five of these shows um, which will be called the first series of them in, in April, around the tour. And then I believe we're going to run the other five towards the end of the year. But that's an exciting new thing for me. It's quite educational. Um, it, it's the, the reason I wanted to do a show like this um, was because um, when I was sort of 15, 16, and desperately trying to learn how to make music, um, how, how to be to you know be a, a better producer and a songwriter. I used to sit with my earphones on, lying in bed, just desperately listening for little clues of how they got sounds and how they get. And and this this is is what uh, if I was fifteen again, this is the sort of show that I would it would have helped me so much to listen to something like this. So that's that's the idea behind it. Um, to get tips and you know great bits of anecdotes and there's some really good shows we, we we've we've recorded about four of them already and we'll do the other six throughout the year so i'm very excited to that and i hope i hope you all tune in and enjoy that um so let's go back to um uh, ne uh to to next year 2018 um we have as a as a band we have a a greatest hits at the end of the year um greatest hits they don't excite me whatsoever i always think that bands release them uh, at the end of their careers um and of course we we don't feel like that at all um so so we're going to do something a little bit interesting with our back catalog um, we, we're not going to deface it, but we're going to we're going to creatively have a look at it, um, freshen it up, and uh, we're we're excited about sort of filling the last two months of the year um, with a, a couple of new songs on this record, um, and and looking again at the at the catalogue and 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 giving it a little bit of a refresher uh, to then take it on tour in the the following year. So that'll be that'll be really really an interesting thing. And then the last thing I'm going to leave you with um, is uh, I should talk about the book. We haven't talked about this properly yet. Um, and I guess um, without going, I don't want to get too um, too deep into it, but um, the book's two things really, and I am still writing it um, at the moment, but the book for me is two things. I think I think if you're just someone who's got a bit of an interest in me and you fancy a, a little read and try and get a little bit more under the bonnet, I think it's a, it's an autobiography. It's, it could simply be just looked at as an autobiography, um, an updated one. Um, but I think there's another, there's another important message that I'm trying to uh, play with in it. And that's, and that's the whole food issue for me. Um, if I if I re remember back in May two thousand and three, um, you know I rolled out of bed. I was I was I remember looking at the scales. I was about seventeen. I was just over seventeen stone at that point. 
I was terrifically unhappy. I didn't have any career at the time, really. Um, I was um, I was eating too much. I was drinking too much. I was um, I was at a bit of a lost end, really. I was getting really good at going out for Chinese's and coming home and making myself sick. I mean, I was getting to the point where this could have been a really big issue for me. Um, and when I think about it now, if I could have reached across and read this book I'm about to write, it could have saved me a lot of pain and heartache because it's taken me really years to undo that state I was in. A um, lot of diet books. And for anyone who's struggled with weight, I think diets just don't work. I think I think there's very few people they truly work for. Um, and the, I think the really sad thing when I've been recounting this, this bit of time is, is that I was on a diet for about nine years. Um, that's an awful long time. And the diets I would, was doing, they weren't healthy diets. They were like these fat-free diets. And I think anyone who's been on a fat-free diet will know that they're miserable. They're absolutely miserable things to be on. You're hungry. You're basically going insane, really. You're going mad. You're going crazy. It's a really... Dieting in that way is, is very, very tough. Um, and so what I want to recall is when I eventually found my groove, which was about six years ago, um, and found a, a, a way of eating for me, because that's the thing, we're all different. Um, and, you know, if somebody brought a T-shirt out in a size medium and tried to sell it to everyone, it obviously wouldn't work for anyone. So, so a lot of these diets, they're so... They're so broad, that, that which is why they don't work. And, and, and so I eventually found the way of eating for me that worked. And I'm not going to confess that I've, I've got control of this thing because there's definitely still times where I haven't. Um, but, but I'm definitely on the... the, 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 the it, it's more balanced. My life is more balanced. And I just want to share... Um, and I'm aware also, by the way, that there's people who aren't interested in this. But, but you know, I, I only have to look down my Twitter feed and I think one in three messages for me are, I'm in a bad place, I want to lose weight, I don't know how to. And the, one of the things that shocked me when I realised that I was at the foot of this enormous mountain um, was that I didn't know anything about food. I really didn't. And we are in an age now of information. The information is all around us everywhere. And people try and make it confusing for us. You know, we read all these things where one week sit-ups is amazing for you. The next week, don't do sit-ups. It's so bad for you. It's like they're all confusing us. But there's great people out there. There's great people on Instagram, on YouTube. There's amazing people. Um, and so that that's that's what I want to base a bit of my book about. So if you if you're someone out there who wants to have a change of life or if, if is even just interested in just going, I'll try this for a few weeks, then then this book will definitely help with that. Um, and so I'm going to sign out now by saying that um, there's a little project I've been working on in the last couple of weeks, and it is linked to the book. Um, New Year is going to arrive um, and I am going to um, start Barlow's Boot Camp because I have from the New Year till April to get myself into ship shape to come on a stage with, in front of you guys. Um, and I'm going to catalogue it and I've got some of my friends um, who are often expert cooks and they've got cookbooks and they do yoga and they do um, uh, fitness on Instagram and I've I've basically rallied everyone up and I've done a series of these pieces which I'm just going to drop onto all my socials and so you you don't have to go out and buy DVDs and all this stuff it's all free it's up there and if you're interested it's really fun some of it is um and I, I've had real fun doing it and and it's possibly you know something I'll I'll keep up over time because I think it's quite interesting and, and like I say you know I certainly am not an expert in 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 um in in health and fitness but I it is my hobby I'm fascinated by it um and I I I come from it from this point that you know it's not it's not that I want to live till I'm 150 you know I'm someone who's um 
you know when you when you come to watch me live or you switch the telly on i don't want to be the 70% version of myself i want to be the 110% version uh to be stood there and feel confident um, and that that's why I, I do it and um i love it and and it's a, a hobby i don't talk about a lot and so i'm i'm going to start sharing it on here but barlow's boot camp's going to start I'm not going to be telling you what to do because that's not what that's not the message. It's not me going. You need to do this. You need to do that. It's 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 me showing you what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing, and if you can take something from that or a little piece from that and use it to your advantage, and you know, then that that's brilliant. Um, but I think that concludes us. I think that concludes. So look out early in the new year for that. I'm going to wish you all a absolutely fabulous Christmas and a, and a happy new year and all the rest of it um, and um, I think that's all it's been quite nice hasn't it this just sat talking maybe we'll schedule an, another one around Barlow's boot camp in the new year uh, but for now I'm going to hit the end button and I'm going to say good night to you all and thank you for tuning in see you next year bye for now <laughs>